financial reporting. Chapter 1 to 13 we have covered so far. Let's move towards chapter 14. Earning per share. Earning per share. This is an accounting standard on earning per share IAS 33. Earning per share. So every year end, company need to prepare their financial statements. And there are five components of financial statements. Statement of profit and loss, statement of changes in equity, statement of financial position, cash flow statement, and notes of the accounts. In a notes of the accounts, company need to show earning per share. Earning per share. What does that mean? How much shareholder earning per share? How much shareholder earning per share? How we can calculate this? How we can calculate this? How we can calculate this? Earning. You are it by total earnings divided by number of, number of shares. Earning. What is mean by earning? Profit after tax. Earning means profit after tax because company pay to shareholder from profit after tax divided by number of shares. Suppose company profit after tax is 10,000, company have issued 100,000 shares. So 0 0.10 is earning per share. We will call it 10 cent. So 10,000 is profit. 100,000 shares company have issue. So we'll call it 0 0.10 multiply by 100. Always it is calculated under cent. Like the dollar sign is this. So cent C cross Y. Is it fine? I mean, if you calculate on the calculator, the answer will be 0.1. So multiply by 100, what you get? 10 cents mean in PESA, like rupee and PESA, mean 100 PESA is equal to 1 rupee. In similar, 100 cents is equal to 1 dollar. Is that fine? Okay, so this is the formula. Earning divided by number of shifts. Earning divided by number of shifts. In fact, the formula is not number of shares. Formula is earning divided by weighted average number of shares. Earning divided by weighted average number of shares. What does that mean? Weighted average number of shares. Suppose at start of the year, Company is having 100,000 shares. At end of the year, company is having the same 100,000 shares. Where we calculate earning per share? Start of the year, end of the year. Where we prepare financial statements? End of the year, so we will calculate earning per share at end of the year. If there is no change in shares during the year, we will take this 100,000 number of shares. This is also weighted average number of shares. Earning divided by weighted average number of shares. But if suppose during the year, during the year, say on 1st of August, Company issued 50,000 more shares. This means at end of year, company is having 150,000 shares. Now we need to calculate weighted average number of shares. We cannot take the complete 150,000 shares as 
weighted average. How we will calculate weighted average number of shares now? Instead of this, we will calculate how at start of the year there were 100,000 shares that continue throughout the year. So that we will take a complete. But the other 50,000, when we should, from 1st August, they were not utilized for the complete year. They utilized how many months? August, September, October, November, December, five months. So we'll take five months of them into five by 12. Can you calculate the value, please? Oh, plus, plus 100, 120,000? 823. 823. So this is called weighted average number of shares. Weighted average means proportionate the new share issued during the year according to their months. If there were no new share issue during the year, whatever was the start they used for complete year, so we'll take as it is. But if any shares issued during the year, so we need to proportion it according to the months. Can you understand this? So what is the formula to calculate earning per share? Earning divided by weighted average number of shares. So let's move on. So basic EPS, there are two types of EPS. One is called basic EPS, other is called diluted EPS. First, we will discuss about basic EPS. So basic EPS formula is earning divided by weighted average number of shares. What is meant by earning? Profit after tax. Earning mean profit after tax less non-controlling interest what is non-controlling interest this we will learn in consolidation group accounts share of other investors I mean if we acquire a company 60 percent what is 40 percent non-controlling interest so in group accounts, we need to deduct that non-controlling interest less preference shares dividend. If company have issued any preference shares, so their dividend we need to deduct from profit after tax. In simple word, earning mean profit after tax. But if company have issued any preference shares, we need to deduct the preference shares dividend from profit after tax. So that will be called a peak. If we are calculating EPS for a group company, for a group company, group company mean where there is a parent company and subsidiaries, then we need to deduct non-controlling interest from profit after tax as well. And divided by number of shares, if in a group, we will add the number of shares of subsidiary parent company, both for single company, it's only number of shares. So earning group of profit after tax, less non-controlling interest, and irredeemable preference shares the dividend. Because redeemable preference shares dividend we record as finance cost expense that has already been deducted while calculating profit after tax. And shares mean weighted average number of ordinary shares in issue during the period, including parents as well as subsidiary in case of group company. So what is mean by earning profit after tax minus 
preference shares dividend minus non controlling interest increase of group. In this chapter, there is no question relating to group. So simple earning mean profit after tax minus preference shares dividend divided by weighted average number of shares for the company. Because, because this whole chapter is based on single company. Restriction one. An entity with the year end 31st December 20x8 issued 200,000 shares at full market price of 3 on 1st July 20x2. In on 1st July 20x8, company issued 200,000 more issues per share. The relevant information for 20x7 is that profit attributable to ordinary shares order for the year ending at 31st December mean this is what earning. 20x7 460 and 20x8 550. And number of ordinary shares in issue at 31st December 20x7 was this, while 20x8 was this because we issued 200,000 more. Calculate EPS for both years. For 20x7, earning 460 divided by number of shares 800,000. What is that? 0.5. 0.575, so we will call it 57.5 cent. While for 20x8, 550 divided by 800,000 plus 200,000 when we issued 1st July, so 6 by 12. This means 550 divided by 900,000. How much is that? 0 0.611. You can say 61.1 cent. How we have calculated this? 550,000. That is earning for 20x8 and 800,000 was a share at start of the year that uh, we used for the complete year, but remaining 200,000 we issued when? In July, 1st July, so that were used for six months. So is equal to what? 61.1 cent. And they have calculated. Test your understanding one, please. Calculate EPS for Girard for 20x4. Girard earning for the year ended 31st December 20x4 are 2208,000. Earning. On 1st January 20x4, means start of the year, the issued share capital of Girard was 828. 0,000 ordinary shares of one each mean initial shares. The company issued 3312 shares at full market value on 30th June 20x4. So how to calculate EPS? So double 208 earning divided by at start of year we were having 8280 plus during the year we Issued 3312 multiply by on 30th June. This means six months. If the year ended 30th uh, December, 31st December. So, what's the EPS figure now? One, two, two. No, point, point. 32.2 cents. Done. What is the bonus issue? What is the bonus issue? Instead of paying dividend, sometime company pay shares to the shareholder. Instead of paying them money, company pay in terms of shares. This is also called 
capitalization issue or script issue? Capitalization issue or script issue? Whether company receiving any cash on this? No. But if company issuing new shares, share capital is going to increase. Number of shares are going to increase. So bonus issue, capitalization or script issue does not provide additional resource to the issuer. Mean company is not having additional cash. Means that the shareholder on the same proportion of the business before and after the issue means their proportionate shareholding will remain same, but number of share are going to change. If suppose company is issuing new shares during the year as bonus issue, what could be the treatment? Mr. A owns 5,000 shares in company B, which has an issued capital of 100,000 shares. Mr. A therefore owns 5% of company B. Company B makes a one for one bonus issue. Mean against each share he held, company will issue one more share. Mean he was having 5,000 before, now he will receive one for one mean 5,000 more, so 10,000 shares in company B. This means the share was 100,000 before. Now it will become 200,000. His shareholding will remain same 5% that was before and 5% now mean through bonus issue. Shareholding percentage of shares will remain same, but the number of shares will increase. Illustration three. An entity make a bonus issue of one new shares for every five existing shares held on 1st July 20x8. One new share against five existing. When they should 1st July 20x8. Profit attributable to the ordinary shareholder mean earning at 20x7, 20x8 is this one. Number of ordinary shares in issue at 31st December before mean starting was 100,000. And if sorry, 1 million. If 1 million was before they issued 1 for 5, how much new share issued as bonus? 200,000. 200,000. Total become 1,200,000. We need to calculate EPS in 20x8 as well as 20x7. In bonus, either company issued during the year, we will consider company have issued at start of the year. Company issuing bonus though during the year, what we will consider company have issued at start of the year. I mean, we will add from start of the year. How to calculate EPS for 20x7 460? We will consider it. This year issued at start of the year. So 10,000. Plus bonus at start of the year. So for 20x7, the EPS will be this. Even for 20x8, we will consider the same number of shares. In how many new shares company have issued as a bonus? 200,000. In bonus, we will not proportionate, we will not say these are issued from 1st July, so we need to wait it average. No, we will consider this bonus share issued at start of the year. But the start of the year of 20x8, 1st January, mean 31st December of 20x7. We will not proportionate in case of bonus. Uh, in the answer, why have to take you 1200 
for these were opening number of shares during the year they issued 200 more share but these are issued as a bonus issue first july that's the point i am saying even we issued bonus during the year we will consider it it issued at start of the year I mean at start of the year company were having how many shares this I mean 10,000 plus this bonus we will not proportionate bonus issue as we proportionate the normal cash issue shares if the during the year share issued on cash that we will need to proportionate according to month but in case of bonus issue, we will not proportion it according to month. We will consider this bonus issue at what date? At start of the year. I mean, we will include these bonus issue share at opening shares with opening shares. So for 20x7, how we can calculate EPS? 460 divided by 1200,000. For 20x8, 550 divided by 1200,000. Because we are considering these shares bonus issued at start of the year, we will not proportionate it. According to initial 10th of 1 million, but we are considering it's issued at start of the year. It's issued in July. It's start of the year means first in January 2018. So 100 incomes of 2017. I mean, start of the year January 2018. So how is it coming in 2017? That's I understand. Because this was approved before 20x7 financial statement. That's why we are including it in 20x7 as well. 20x5 and it's given on 20x8. No, no, no. We will consider only 20x7 and 20x8 only. If it, there is a 20x6, 20x5 data, no, no. We will not add to that because 31st December mean 1st January. 31st December mean 1st January as well. In simple word, in case of bonus issue, we will not proportionate it. Test your understanding too. You need to calculate EPS for the year ending 31st March 20x3 together with the comparative EPS for 20x2 that would present it in 20x3 accounts mean you need to calculate EPS for 20x2 and 20x3. So look at it. Good luck everybody. Calculate EPS for 20x2 and 20x3 for both years.
So share capital ordinary shares is a seven hundred thousand. Share premium, revaluation surplus, retained earning, shareholder funds. Dora Bella makes a bonus issue of one share for every seven held on 31st August 20X2. And a profit after tax mean earning is this one. So already they were having how much? 7 million, they issue one for seven. How much they more issue? 1 million more. So all together, 8 million number of shares. So 750 divided by 8 million is equal to what? 9.37. Cent. 9.4 cent. And divided by 8 million. 14.4 cent. Don't need to be confused with these data. Earning divided by weighted average number of shares. And this is bonus issue. So will not proportionate from 31st August on. Bonus and market issue combined. Market issue mean cash issue. Mm -hmm. If you not better, bonus issue and cash issue both have issued, <laughs> then how we will calculate earning per share. So test your understanding three. An entity had a 1 million share in issue on 1st January 20 X1 means start of the year. They issued 200,000 shares at market value on 1st April 20 X1. Mean on 1st April they issued 200,000 cash issued share issued. This need to be proportional. Followed by one for five bonus issue. On 1st August 20X1. With the further 300,000 issued at market value on 1st October 20X1. If profits for the year ending mean earning is 220, what is the basic EPS? Now what happened according to this scenario if we see? This is our year. Here is the 1st January. Here is 31st December. At 1st January, company were having what? Mm. 1 million. Shares. On 1st April, company issued 200 market mean cash share issued. Where? 1st April, how many? 200,000. On 1st August, company issued bonus here. One for five. How we should calculate this bonus issue? When bonus was issued at that time, company was having 1.2 million shares. But 1 million at start and 2 million during. Not for the complete year, not for as per the start. How we will calculate bonus issue here? Uh, We will calculate bonus issue for both separately. For this 100,000, we will calculate bonus issue. How much? 100,000, uh, 1 million. Not 100,000, 1 million into 1 by 5. What's the value? 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. 
200,000. And this 1.2 million will be used for the complete year. While for this 200,000, the bonus issued was 200,000 into 1 by 5. How much? 40? Yeah, 40. This means this 240 we will weighted average from 1st April onward. Because at the time of bonus, they were 1.2 million shares, but 1.2 complete was not from start of the year. If there is any share issue for cash before bonus issue during the year, so we need to calculate bonus issue set. Can you understand this? And then what happened at 31st? At 1st October, we issued how many? 300,000 more shares. 300,000 more shares. How we will calculate EPS now? Earning is 220,000. This one point two million used for the complete year. So twelve hundred thousand that is used for complete year. This two forty from first April onward mean used for nine months. So we'll proportion these for nine months. 240,000 into nine by 12. And this 300,000, that is cash issue that we need to proportion for October, November, December, three months. Now, can you calculate EPS for me, please? So 220,000 divided by what? Can you calculate the amount? Number, we did every number of shares. 1.2 million plus 240 into 9 by 12 plus 300,000 into 3 by 12. 15 point? Once. So why are you taking 240,000? What is the total number of shares? So it be like, so we divide uh, we divided the bonus issue into both. I mean for this we have calculated separate. For this we have calculated separate rather than calculating a complete on 1.2 million. So we calculated bonus for separate because these are used for the complete year. But this was cash issue during the year that we need to proportion. So these 240 need to be proportioned. Can you please calculate weighted average number of shares? Total uh, 1,455,000. 1, 1, 1, 5, 5, 5, so what is EPS? 15.1. If there is bonus as well as market both issues during the year. So how we need to calculate EPS? Because if there is any cash issue before bonus issue. So we'll not consider the bonus issue at start of the year. Because the cash issue we need to proportion it. So in similar manner, we need to include its bonus part that will need to be proportionate for the number of months.
So if a question give both a bonus issue and an issue of shares at a full price, mean market price, lie the bonus fraction from the start of year up until the date of the bonus issue. Time apportion the number of shares to reflect the cash being received from market value. Ignore this, just focus on this example, mean how we will calculate the figure. So we have consider effect on EPS if there are cash share during the year. Effect on EPS if there is a bonus issue during the year. Now we are going to study if there is a right issue during the year. What is mean by right issue? What is mean by right issue? Company want to issue new shares. But before issuing to general public, company first offering to its existing shareholder. And to existing shareholder, company issue shares at a price lower than market price. Suppose market price of share is 100. Mean to general public, if company will issue shares, that will be on 100 per share. But to existing company provide some discount, say a company will issue at 80 or 90 to the existing share. So right issue present special problem, the contribution additional resources. Let's move towards a question stick to it. An entity issued one new shares for every two existing shares held by way of right issue at 1.5 per share. On 1st July 20x8, pre-issue market price was 3. I mean market price is 3, but to existing shareholder company issuing what? At 1. At 1.5. And company issuing what? One new share for every two held. One new share for every two held. This means existing. If they are having two shares, that is at market price of how much? Three is equal to six. Now company issuing one new shares at a price of 1.5. So 1.5. How many number of shares will become in total? Three. And what is the value that will become 7.5? If we divide this 7.5 by 3, we can calculate a value that is 2.5. This value is called practical extra right price. EERP stands for theoretical X right price. Theoretical X rise price. For example, if there was a one for three right issue for three, the market price is a five. I mean, existing three will get one new. So existing three, what is the existing market price? Five is equal to 15. What is the new one share at what new price? Three so is equal to three. So 15 plus three is equal to 18. How many shares now? Four. So 18 by four, 4.5. What is that? Theoretical X right price. Practical. X right price first we need to calculate in case of right issue. If there is any right issue. Where market value of share is different. And. Issue price is different. We need to calculate practical X right price. T E R P theoretical X right price. Existing 
mean number of shares, how many they are having existing with the existing market price, how much new they can get against existing into new price. So add both prices, add both number of shares, divide the price with shares, we can get theoretical X right price. So first we need to calculate theoretical X right price. In this theoretical X right price, in this theoretical X right price, the EPS formula will remain same profit after tax divided by weighted average number of shares. But we need to calculate this weighted average number of shares. We need to calculate a bonus fraction as well. What is bonus fraction? Market price divided by theoretical X right price. In this example, can you calculate bonus fraction? What is market price? Three divided by theoretical X right price, 2.5. So we'll call it 3 by 2.5. This is what bonus fraction. Then we issued a new shares at 1st July 20X8 during the year. From 1st July 20X8 during the year. But the bonus part we consider issued at start of the year. So we need to calculate what is the bonus part. We need to calculate what is the bonus part by using this bonus fraction. How many shares company were having before? How many shares company were having before? I mean, at start, they were having 800,000 shares. So 800,000 shares into bonus fraction 3 by 2.5. Can you calculate what's the value? Nine sixty thousand. We took the bonus element from this right issue and added to the start number of shares because we consider bonus element at start the year. So for every one company issued two new shares. This means against this 800,000, for every one company issued two new shares, can you calculate how much right issue is there? How much? 400,000. 400, Out of this 400,000, 160 is a bonus issue. Remaining is what? Right. And we need to take cash part and bonus part separate because the bonus part we need to treat issued at start of the year. So in this 800,000 existing, if we add these 400,000, we will be having the, these at year end. Enough. If from this 12 million, we deduct this 960. But we are having remaining. So this is relating to cash during the year that need to be proportion according to month. Then we issued. First July, what's the year end? 31st December. How many months? Can you calculate figure? 120. So initially we were having 960. We have issued how many more? 120, if we add both, 
This is weighted average number of sheets. So we need to calculate EPS for 20x7. How much is earning for 20x7 for 60,000? How much earning for 20x7 for 60,000? How many shares at start of the year with the bonus issue 960? So 460 divided by 960, what is the EPS for 20x7? Forty-seven point nine cent. Forty-seven point nine cent. And what is the EPS for twenty x eight? Five fifty divided by one zero eight zero. What's that? Fifty point three cents. Fifty point. In case of right issue, first we need to see how many shares against existing what. So this was existing mean existing two will get one new. Existing will be multiplied with the existing market price. That is what three and a new will be multiplied with new price that is reduced 1.5. So we calculated the amount total and we calculated the shares total. Dividing the amount by shares, we got theoretical X right price that is 2.5. If we divide theoretical X price by market price, we can find the Bonus fraction. This means now we are able to separate bonus part and cash part from this right issue. Because company is issuing below market price. This means there is a sum of bonus providing to the shareholder. So in the existing shareholder, we need to multiply this bonus fraction. We can calculate opening the shares, including bonus. Instead of 800,000, what is opening share, including bonus? 960. That will be used to calculate earning per share of previous year. 460 is the earning divided by 960. So we calculated earning per share for 20x7. Well, for 20x8, company issued how many rights? One for two against this. This means the new share issued are 400,000. Total become 1,200,000. Out of this, if we opening including bonus deduct, what is remaining? 250, that is a cash share issue. In this right issue, what is the part of cash? 240. What is the part of bonus? The difference between these two, 160, altogether 400,000. And this cash issue, we need to proportion it. How? Number of months. This means this was opening bonus. This cash issue, we need to proportion it according to month. This means this is what closing weighted average number of shares. That we will use to calculate EPS for the current year. 20x8. Is that? Where we need to calculate theoretical x right price in case of right issue. In case of bonus issue, no need to calculate theoretical X right price. Only you need to add that bonus issue shares at start of the year, not proportionally. So we have covered four concepts, simple basic EPS, 
if any shares issued during the year, how to calculate EPS? We need to proportion it. If there is a bonus issue during the year, don't need to proportion it. If there is a right issue during the year, first we need to calculate what theoretical X right price. We need to find bonus fraction. Multiply that bonus fraction with opening shares. To calculate opening shares with bonus. Then find what is the remaining share issued for cash. And proportion it. Question understanding for good luck, everybody. I need answer for. EPS. 31st December 20X2. Even for one as First, calculate theoretical X right price. Find the bonus fraction.
Tout ça. Market price. This market price divided by theoretical excited price. That will be four, 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 triple four. Mm -hmm. That we will use for previous year EPS number of ships. Simple. So we have issued one for four. This means right issue is what? Four million we were having before and one for four. So we issued one million more. Is that? And after right, we are having how many? Five. Out of this, if we deduct the opening, the remaining is for cash. That is what? Triple five, double five, six. When do we shoot? First July. We need to proportion six by 12. That will be two double seven 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 eight. So we got weighted average. How much? Four seven double two triple. Is that? For 20x1, 320 divided by what? Tetra 4. Tetra 4. How much is that? For 20x8, we will use. 425 divided by 4722. What's the answer? 9.0 cent and 7.2 cent. In case of right issue, first we need to calculate theoretical X right price. Existing shares, five, four, how many? With existing market price. New shares, normally one for. What's the price? Discounted. Multiply, calculate total amount, total shares, amount by shares, theoretical x right price. How to calculate bonus fraction, market price divided by theoretical x right price. Multiply this bonus fraction with initial number of shares, opening shares. So we'll be having opening shares with the bonus element. This will be used to calculate previous year EPS. Now, see, we were having the start, how many 4 million? Through right issue, how many new shares issued? 1 million. Multiply by 1 by 4. This means total we are having how many 5 million out of this if you include the opening with the bonus, the remaining is cash issue. Mean 
mean, if you add both these triple four and triple five, you will be having one million. But this cash issue is used for how many months? Six months. So we calculated weighted average for the current year. This is a difficult part in this chapter only. In case of right issue, how to calculate it? Yes. This is the extreme difficult of this chapter. In this example, even more difficult because the figures are coming in four, 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 four. Five, 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 five. So make a habit, always put a comma in figure after three. Otherwise, it will be difficult. What is that figure? Four, 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 four. How many four? Even your calculator show with comma. Okay, let's move forward. Basic EPS is done. With the new shares issued during the year. With the bonus issued during the year. With the bonus as well as cash issued during the year. With the right issue during the year. Now we are moving towards diluted EPS. The word diluted, what does it mean by diluted? Dilute. You have studied chemistry, science. What does it mean by diluted? Yes, from less reduced, going to reduce. Diluted means? going to reduce. If there are chances, your future EPS will reduce due to some commitments. Then you need to calculate both EPS basic as well as diluted to point. Why? For shareholder better decision making. How EPS can be reduced? Either earning reduced or number of share increased. Earning will reduce. No, you cannot put it. Number of share will increase. Yes, if you have uh, any commitment. You have signed any contract. In that case, in future, share could increase. And with the increase of share, ultimately denominator will become a more. So EPS figure will be reduced. How EPS figure can be reduced in future? So we have heard about a convertible debt. Convertible bond, convertible loan. What was that? In financial instruments, we studied convertible. I mean, we have uh, issued some uh, bonds. The bondholder, I mean, investor will be having option. Either they can take the loan amount or they can convert into shares. This means it's on the option of investor. If the share price in future is high, they obviously move towards share. This means there are chances our future shares will increase. This means how much they will increase. According to that, we need to calculate a liquidity piece. Because in convertible bond, everything is pre decided. If you don't take the loan amount, how many shares you will able to take? At what price? Already mentioned. We took $10,000 loan by issuing bonds. We have given them option either you can take this 10,000 after five years 
or you can take 100 shares of company with this price. They will see the price you stated. If future share price in market is more, they take the share because they will take the share from you at reduced price and they will sell into the market at higher price. If there is market price that is lower than what you have offered, they will not take the shares. Who will decide? Investor will decide. And normally after four or five years, company share prices goes up. Because you have taken the loan, obviously you have invested somewhere. Through that, you will generate profit. And through profitability, company share price will go up. So there are more chances they will take the shares. In that case, future share will be more. EPS will be reduced. So we need to calculate that ridiculous. So diluted EPS. Equity share capital may increase in future due to circumstances which exist now. Circumstances, we issued convertible bond. We signed a contract with them. Either you can take the loan amount or you can take share. When it occurs, this increase in share will reduce or dilute the earning per share. The provision of a diluted EPS figure attempt to alert shareholder to the potential impact on EPS of these additional shares. How EPS can dilute mean how number of shares in future can increase conversion terms, for example, convertible bond, convertible loan you have issued. Or you have a provided option to the investor. You have signed a contract. What is option? A contract with some investor. After three months, you can take these number of shares at this price. And option is a right. Either they will take or even they can refuse. So how EPS will be calculated? Suppose, 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 suppose. Company have issued convertible debts. Four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. And the debt interest rate is ten percent. Investor either can take hundred thousand. Or they can take company shares of uh, say five thousand. The formula to calculate EPS was earning mean profit after tax divided by number of shares. This means our existing shares will increase by this 5,000. But if they will convert into shares, no more interest will be. And this fact we have calculated by using the interest figure. This means there will be no interest. This means what is 10% of this? 10,000 that we need to add back with patch. In how earning will be adjusted in case of diluted EPS, PAT will be adjusted with the amount of interest. I mean profit we need to increase because while calculating this profit, we deducted the interest. Now we need to add back. But we normally pay tax on profit as well. If we add this interest to the profit, our profit will be more. And we need to pay more tax. So that tax we need to adjust as well. We deduct, say, 30% is tax rate. 
what is 30 percent of 10,000? 3,000. So that will be tax. So in case of diluted EPS, in earning, we need to adjust the interest, mean add back and deduct the tax on interest amount. That we need to pay more. And in number of shares, we need to add what? Whatever is the number of share they will get in future. That we have offered them. So diluted EPS formula will be earning plus notional extra earning. Notional extra earning mean interest minus tax. And number of shares plus notional extra share that they can take in future. Then we need to take effect of interest and tax with the earning and effect of new shares with number of shares. We have explained here dividend tax, additional earning, interest. See this illustration for. On 1st April 20X1, an entity issued a convertible loan note of 1250,000. This is the convertible debt amount. The loan note carries an effective interest rate of 8%. Each dollar hundred nominal of loan stock will be convertible in 20X6 to 20x9. I mean they can redeem either 20x6 or e. into the number of ordinary shares set out below. 124 shares, 120 shares, 115 shares, 110 shares. If there are so many options given, we will always take the highest number of shares. What is the highest number of shares? Oh, Up to 20x6, the maximum number of shares issuable after the end of the financial year will be at the rate of 124 shares per 100 on 1250 debt, which is uh, this year. In these number of shares will be issued. They will convert. With 400 million already in issue, these are initial shares. How much they are going to increase with 1550 more? I mean 1.55 million more. If they convert that into shares, how many shares they will take? 1.55 million. Existing what you are having? 4 million. So this is denominator. The total would become 550. 5.55. If the diluted earning per share calculation always assume that the maximum possible number of shares will be issued. That's why they calculated using 124. And in this question, there is no tax given, there is no information about earning per share, otherwise we can calculate earning per share. They are just explaining, I mean, how the weighted average number of shares will be calculated using diluted EPS. If a scenario will come like this. Now they have provided relevant information. Issued share capital, 500,000 in 10 percent cumulative irredeemable preference shares of a dollar one. One million in ordinary shares of 25 cent each 400,000 shares total. The tax rate is 30 percent. Trading result for the year ended 31st December were as follows. Profit before interest and tax is this. 
interest on 8% convertible loan note is this profit before tax income tax charge according to 30% rate profit after tax companies having this this how to calculate this this was the profit after tax they were having and we learn in very first page if there is any irredeemable preference shares that dividend we need to deduct from the earning there is a irredeemable preference shares what is dividend of it 50000 so from earning this is the earning mean profit after tax so from profit after tax they excluded the dividend this is the earning and uh, how this uh, eps is calculated in earning we need to add back what interest amount so this was the interest that they excluded from here and 30 percent of this will be tax that will be 30,000 and for this 75 that will be 22,500. So interest we need to add back in earning interest we need to add back and tax we need to deduct. So this is the adjusted earning. The adjusted earning. So this was the profit after tax in which we deducted the dividend this amount this amount moving from here to here in that we add back the interest we deduct the income tax so we arrive at what we arrive at adjusted earning what's that these figures okay this is the total of these so this is the adjusted earning and uh, number of shares at start we were having how many at start we were having how many 400000 so for 20x1 we will divide by 400000 this figure for just earning divided by 400000 for 20x2 for 20x2 400000 was at start during year we issued a new this but from when from 1st april so that will be time proportion so this will be weighted average number of ships and move towards this test your understanding five Calculate the diluted EPS for the year ending 31st December 20x4. A company had 8.28 million shares in issue at start of the year and made no new issue of shares during the year ending 31st December 20x4. But on that date, it had an issue 2.3 million convertible loan stock. That will be convertible from 20x6 till 20x9. Any time. The loan stock carries an effective interest rate of 10%. That is 230,000. Assume an income tax of 30%. The earning for the year was 2208,000. The loan stock will be convertible into one or share as follows. 90 against 100 value debt, 85 against 100 value debt, 80 against 100 value debt, 75 against 100 value debt. In how many shares they haven't provided information? They have provided information about share value. So to calculate EPS, first we need to calculate revised earning. What is earning? 
double two zero eight. So earning is double two zero eight thousand. In that we need to add back interest. How much? Two thirty. And we need to deduct what tax at the rate of 30% of what this amount? What is 30% of 230? 69,000. 69, so we have calculated revised permit. How much? 2415,000. So we have calculated nominator. Can you check whether it is two for one five thousand? Something different. Two three six nine. Two three six. That is not a two point three million. That is ten percent interest of this debt. Ten percent is what two thirty thousand, not two point three million. Now we need to calculate a new number of shares. How much shares we are having before? Number of shares. So this we have calculated revised earning. Now we are moving towards. So opening shares we are having how much? 8.2 million. 8.28 million. Is that? And they can convert into how many shares? There is no information given, but they have provided information against 100 value debt. They can take 90. What is highest? 90, 85, 80, or 75? 90. So see, extra shares. 2.3 million is the value. And for every 100, they can get 90. Through this, we can calculate shares. This is 90, not number of shares. I mean for against every 100 debt value, they can take what? 90 of dollar one shares. How many shares? Uh, two zero seven thousand. Two zero seven zero thousand. So we can add both one zero three five zero thousand. So now this revised earning divided by this. Weighted average number of shares. So diluted EPS is equal to 2369 divided by 10350 is equal to what? 22.89 cents. One decimal, please. This was easy as compared to right issue. As compared to right issue, this is easy. Okay. okay, shall we move forward? Just one last topic. If there is any option, or warrant option mean you have signed a contract in future you can take these number of shares at this value option mean either they will take or will not take normally we offer below market rate mm -hmm. So to whom you have signed a contract, he will be having option. 
either he will take share or not. But as you have signed the contract, there is chances future share will be increasing. The price at which you offer the option that is called exercise price. The price at which you offer the option that is called exercise price. For example, like banking. Like market price of share is a five. You have offered, okay, I will sell you share in future at three. So that is called exercise price at which he will be having option either to exercise or do not exercise. Mm -hmm. While the market price is called fair price, fair value. Market price will be called fair value. You have given an option of 100,000 shares at the rate of two, while market price is three. This two will be called exercise price. Also called strike price. These three will be called market price or you can say fair value of share. Market price or fair value of shares. If he will take 100,000 shares at the price of two, how much money you will get? 200,000. What is the fair value of your share? Three. Three. Though you are issuing shares 100,000 to him. But if you offer, if you sell in market for 200,000, how many share you can issue in the market for 200,000? How many shares you can issue in the market for 200,000? But to this investor, you are offering 100,000. If you sell share in the market for 200,000 amount, So you can sell 66,000 shares, but to him, you are giving 100,000. How many extra you are giving? Mm -hmm. This is called bonus element. Without any consideration. In option, we need to include this bonus element in number of shares. Mm -hmm. In case of option, we need to include this bonus element in number of shares. This can be calculated like this, or this can be calculated using this formula. Number of options, how many number of options you have offered? 100,000 multiply by what is fair value? What value you offer? You add by three. Can you calculate this is the same? Three, three, three bonus elements. How this formula is according to this? So in case of option, we need to include number of shares, but only the bonus element. Not complete, only the bonus element. How? 
On 1st January 20X7, a company has 4 million ordinary shares in issue and issues option for a further 1 million shares. The profit for the year is 500,000 earning. During the year to 31st December 20X7, the average fair value of one ordinary share is a 3 and the exercise price for the share under option was 2. Exercise price is 2. What's the formula? Options multiply by fair value minus exercise price divided by fair value. So using that formula, can you calculate the option? How much option you are offering? 1 million. Multiply by fair value 3, exercise price 2, divided by fair value 3 is equal to what? Triple 3. How many shares you were having before? 4 million. Adding these. What is the profit? So this is diluted EPS. What is your basic EPS? That is. Earning divided by number of shares what you are having. In convertible debt. Option warrant. This information will be used in diluted EPS, not in basic EPS. If you are issuing any convertible debt, you are issuing any option warrant. So this is not increased now. That will increase in future. Might be. So this information will not be used in calculation of basic EPS. This information will be used in calculation of diluted liquid. But during the year, any bonus issue, any cash issue, any right issue, that will be used in basic EPS calculation. Diluted EPS may reduce in future. Due to what? Due to any commitment of increase in share. That is not done now. That will be in future. So in that case, we need to calculate diluted DPS. And in this question, if we need to calculate basic EPS, we don't need to include this convertible data option or warrant information. But in diluted, yes, we need to use this. In case of convertible, how we have discussed, but we need to adjust the earning as well. But in case of option, only we need to adjust number of shares with the bonus element. How we can calculate bonus element using the formula Whatever option you have issued, multiply by fair value minus exercise price divided by fair value of share. Test your understanding six. Good luck, everybody. Chapter almost finished. Just give me answer for this. You need to calculate dilute DPS. Even you can calculate on calculator.
How much? Two six one is that one million options. Market price is one point eight. Exercise price is one point seven. So option multiply by fair value minus exercise price divided by fair value. That will be added to initial shares. And this will be the increase in share due to option. What is basic EPS? Double to zero eight divided by eight to eight zero. Simple. Yes. EPS. Now in the bracket, you took a thousand. Huh. Because I took figure in thousands. Yeah. Double two eight zero. These three zero I omitted. No, no, that's okay. One million. One million mean? Is there one million shares? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Nine twenty. Sir. Mm -hmm. Nine twenty. Mm -hmm. No fine. Yeah. Yes. So the importance of EPS, the EPS figure is also used to calculate price earning ratio. How to calculate price earning ratio of market value of share, mean share price. You add it by EPS. Share price divided by EPS. In against one share, what company is earning? So this investor can find the trend, whether it is increasing, whether it is decreasing, and they can make a decision. It's all theory. That's your understanding, seven. Calculate EPS for A to D. A, B, C, D, and diluted EPS for E and F separately. E and F is on next page. So first calculate EPS for A to D. On 1st January, the issue share capital of uh, pillbox was 12 million preference shares of one each and 10 million ordinary shares of one each. We are having concern with the number of shares 10 million. Yeah. Assume where appropriate that the income tax rate is 30%, mm -hmm. but that will be used in diluted only mm -hmm. in case of convertible bond only. The earning for the year ended 31st December was 5950. Part A. There was no change in issue. Share capital of the company during the year ended 31st December. Basic EPS, you need to calculate. 5950 five, five, divided by 10 million, that is what? 59.6. The company made a bonus issue on 1st October of one ordinary share for every four shares in issue at 30th September. Now calculate the EPS if there is a bonus issue. For one for four. Seven point six cents. Yeah, forty seven point six cents. How the earnings same five nine five zero ten million shares. So multiply by one by four. Yeah. So uh, how much two point five million. So in bonus, we treat it's issued at start of the year. So five nine five zero divided by. 12. Divided by 
12.5 million is equal to what? 47.6 cent. Part C, please. The company issued one share for every 10. On 1st August at full market value. On 1st August. Ten million shares are before. Now they issue more. Is that right issue or cash issue? Cash, cash issue. Yeah. Mean they issue how many more? One million. One million. So ten thousand used for the complete year. Ten million used for the complete year. This one million from August onward. Five by ten. Sorry, this is ten million. The upper figure is so we need to take in thousands. So this is a ten thousand and plus one thousand multiply by five by twelve because the numerator we took in thousand. Fifty seven point one cent. Yeah. So look everybody with the part D. There is right issue. Strategy collection price bonus fraction. Uh, the company made a right issue of uh, one ordinary shares uh, on 1st October in proportion of uh, one of every three shares held. So three existing market price is what four? One they will get at three. That will be 15, that will be four. And uh, theoretical x right price. That is 15 divided by four is equal to 3.75. Bonus fraction will be four divided by 3.75. Market price divided by theoretical x right price. Is that? Yes. Okay. So the share we were having at 10 million. Can we take figure in thousand? Mm -hmm. Multiply by four by 3.75. How much is that? Six, 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 six. Give me it six. And how much? We have issued one for three. 
this mean into one for three we have issued how much how much three 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 yeah. that will become one three 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 out of this we will this opening deduct one zero six 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 so the remaining is cash issue how much is that Six, that is used for how many months? October, November, December. How much? Six, 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 point seven five. Six, six, six point seven five. Yes. Yes. Six, six. Another six. Six. Okay. If we add all together, we are having weighted average. Yes. Make it six six seven. We are having eleven. Three three three. Eleven three three. So what? This is your weighted average number of shares. So EPS is equal to what? Five nine five zero divided by eleven five triple three. What is that? Five two five seven uh, five two five fifty two point five cent. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. move forward? So 10 million shares we are having 5950 we are having earning 30 percent is a tax rate now we are moving towards part e the company made no new shares during the year and 31st december but on that date it had in issue 2.6 million 10 percent convertible bond mm -hmm. these bonds will be convertible into ordinary shares of one 90 against 100 Yes. Can you calculate dilute DPS? First, we need to find the revised earning. Mm -hmm. So earning we are having a 5950. In that, we need to add the interest. Interest will be 260. 260 yes. And uh, tax will be 30% of 260. 78. Yeah, so we are having revised earning. Six one three two. Three two. So EPS is equal to six one three two, and we are having initial number of shares that is uh, ten thousand. Add we need to add two six zero multiply by ninety by hundred for every nine hundred they can take ninety shares. What is EPS figure? Uh, one two three four zero. One two three four zero is the number of shares. Yes. So six one three two divided by one two three four zero is equal to uh, four nine one six cents. Four nine one six cents. Forty nine point six six nine seven seven cents. For F, the company made no issue of shares during the year ended. But on that date, there was outstanding option to purchase 74 ordinary shares of one at 2.5. The market value is a four. So how many options? 74,000 multiply by fair value is a four. Exercise price is 2.5 divided by fair value is a four. 
how many new shares? Two seven seven five zero. Two seven seven five zero. We can say in thousand is twenty eight. Yeah. So how we can calculate EPS? Five nine five zero divided by ten thousand plus twenty eight is equal to what? Sorry. One five seven six. One five one seven six. I got um, um, point five nine three. Five nine five zero divided by one double zero two eight. Mm -hmm. Five nine five zero divided by one double zero two eight. Uh, uh, five nine point three. Yes. I <laughs> So question eight, you will cover by yourself. In a okay. MCQs. We have performed the calculation. So similar calculation, but there are options available. So let's take a break. After break, we will start a new chapter, chapter 15.